Hi, and welcome to ABC Vascular Ultrasound Case Study Intracranial Occlusion of the Internal Carotid Artery. In this video case, we'll show you what are the diagnostic criteria to suspect the presence of an obstructive intracranial carotid disease. We start the assessment using color flow of the common carotid artery using the transverse mode. We optimize the mode first, therefore we reduce the size of the box, we keep the box straight, and we start the assessment of the common carotid artery. We move the transducer up towards the bifurcation of the carotid artery, and you can note that there is not a good color filling despite lowering the scale. We lower the scale as low as we can to better the color filling. However, we can see that there is still some filling defect within the internal carotid artery. Only part of the lumen it is filled with color flow whether the remaining part of the artery is not filled with color flow. At the bottom right corner, you can see what a normal internal carotid artery should look like. Therefore, the points we gained so far using color is that there is a poor color filling of the internal carotid artery and the common carotid artery. This is probably indicative of very um, a low velocity throughout the internal carotid artery and to confirm that the low velocity, we used a very low scale to identify low blood flow velocities. We continue the assessment using the longitudinal mode. Therefore, we turn the transducer, we optimize our color box, we steer the color box parallel to the flow direction. We still have a very low scale, and we then apply the uh, pulse wave Doppler. With the pulse wave Doppler, we obtain a Doppler waveform, which is quite unusual for a common carotid artery. This Doppler waveform has high resistance and there is not a diastolic flow pattern with evidence of a small reversal flow in delayed systole. The normal waveform of a common carotid artery is a low resistance waveform with evidence of a well represented diastolic flow. The absence of a diastolic flow is indicative of distal high resistance, likely caused by an obstructive disease. We continue the assessment into the external carotid artery and we um, confirm the anatomy by using the Doppler mode. Therefore, we place the sample volume within the origin of what we think is the external carotid artery. You can see that we have a normal high resistance waveform. We can confirm that this is the external carotid artery by applying the tapping maneuver, and we can see that there is alteration of the diastolic flow. We now continue the assessment into the internal carotid artery. By using color flow only into the internal carotid artery, we can note that again there is not a complete filling and the pattern of the color is alternating. You can see alternating of color patterns such as red and blue patterns. This again is indicative of distal high resistance territory. However, the brain is a low resistance territory. Therefore, these findings are suspicious of the presence of distal obstructive disease. In a normal condition, there is a continuous filling of the internal carotid artery. You can see here the difference between a normal pattern of the color flow and abnormal pattern of the color flow. We apply the uh, pulse wave Doppler again, and we can see that we are obtaining an abnormal waveform with evidence of reversal flow in the late systole. This is also called a stamp flow and is a typical finding in the presence of an intracranial obstructive disease, which could be either a severe stenosis of the intracranial uh, carotid artery or actually an occlusion. You can see here the difference between the normal internal carotid artery with velocity which are within the normal ranges and in our case the velocity are very low, suggesting again intracranial obstructive pathology. Therefore, the take-home messages uh, from this video case is that uh, color flow um, abnormalities such as alternating pattern of a color flow may be indicative of distal obstructive pathologies. And 
intracranial level and the um, kind of a stamp flow that we notice within the internal carotid artery uh, is also indicative of a distal uh, obstructive pathologies. Remember that you can only make a suspicion of intracranial obstructive disease. The patient will later need of a further uh, imaging for the intracranial circulation, which will confirm the diagnosis or uh, perhaps not. Thanks for watching ABC Vascular Ultrasound.